and we are back. So, very first question. Did you like it? Yes. Yay! I'm very happy. <laughs> there were... I liked most of it. <laughs> yeah, there are, um, I will admit there are, like, some, like, slow bits and stuff and some... Eh, but, you know, it's, it's 1990, you know? There are some were very hard, were very hard to watch. <laughs> uh, example? Uh, the, the kids? Oh, the kids? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It made me cringe. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, um, so, fun fact about the kids so they all were actually not uh they all were from locally from astoria they were not all actors huh interesting yeah so um all of them all of them including they, they were paid 35 dollars a day that sucks that's really good for 1990 for kids all right a kid Inflation. getting paid 35 dollars that's Inflation. like getting paid a hundred dollars, you know? Yeah, that's pretty good actually. But um yeah. Does that so, include the, the Dominic? Um, I think so. Um uh actually, uh fun fact, a lot of um these kids actually went on uh to act, like uh I think three or four went on and acted in other uh big things, so Yeah. So, uh there were some other parts, like, there were some awkward moments, <laughs> like, when Joyce was clearly wanting a kiss, and mm -hmm. he's just like, no. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 I will say, the uh, romance subplot is not the best. Um, that's an understatement. Well, <laughs> you know, it's... But it's like, you know... Uh, I under I understand why it was necessary. But yeah. <laughs> it's, it's because it's like one of those movies that like, you know, 90s romance movies yep. were not the best. Basically, everything starts off from a lie, which is really a not good relationship. And then it all works out in the end. But, you know, whatever. It's the 90s. It's my, fine. My least, <laughs> my least favorite romance trope is romance built on a lie yeah i hate it but like there's so many big things like freaking aladdin that one was that disney one was good. Uh, it's a great great story but it all technically is based on a lie and he's yeah but anyway that's not you ever movie. heard of uh you ever seen christmas in connecticut no don't. Okay. <laughs> it's I mean, a classic, but I. It is pretty much the entire movie is a lie. Yeah, it's well, like it sounds like one of those, um, like you know, Hallmark movies that are terrible. Oh, it's it's very old. It's black and white era. Oh dang! Speaking of old, <laughs> this movie right at the beginning in the frickin' mall, right? Yep. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, no, I've not seen my local mall that packed ever, <laughs> even on, like, the holidays. Like I have. Oh, really? I have, recently. Oh, wow. It was it was when me and, me and my brother decided that we were going to be dumb and go to our local mall the Sunday before Christmas. Ooh, why would you, why would you do that? Why would you do that to yourself? Because because we were leaving state soon. <laughs> that was really the only time we had could. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, crowds on Christmas are not yeah. good, but, like, you know, it just shows, like, you know, 30 years ago, malls were, like, bustling and everything, and then now it's just, like, dead crickets. Yeah. You know? Um. And so, so what do you think of the uh, main villain slash villains? Because technically they're tag team. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was a bit confused about, like, 
like, eventually they did, like, reveal their motives, but, like, I was just like, why do you need to be killing everyone? I know, right? Like, I don't know, but, like, you know, again, probably to do with, um, you know, just being in the 90s, like, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, no, they're just gonna have a huge kill rate, just to show, hey, they're bad. Yeah. But, yeah, well, I mean, so, the first kill, the first kill of the guy that's for the information so that no one else can get the information which i guess you know villain movie thing to do you know but then there was witness um and but like the whole thing with the fact that just because that witness is dead now everything she said is null and void that doesn't make any sense if anything it should be the opposite yeah they should be like uh she was going to be a witness in a trial, and now she's dead. There's something fishy going on. And yeah. Yeah, like, they should not have just released him on that because literally killed the guy. Because, you know, forensics with ballistics, they would have been able to match the gun to... Oh, wait, no! He got rid of the gun. Right. I forgot about that. So they mm. did technically not have anything other than her testimony. But still, they still had her testimony because they did have the first initial court hearing. So they have that testimony. They can't go any yeah. deeper into the testimony, but they still have testimony. Yeah. And, you know, with his other crime stuff, because he's been, you know, tracked down by Kimball for so long, it would make sense to, you know, yeah, no, that guy needs to stay behind bars, because yeah. not good. But, you I've know. Never actually, I've, before this, I had never actually seen a Schwarzenegger movie before. Really? I, yeah. mm, I've seen two others. At least to my knowledge. Um, one was the Christmas one with the terrible kid from, uh, the first Star Wars. Um. Terrible kid? Yeah, are you an angel? Freaking oh. flirting with, like, a 12-year-old. Oh. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, oh. no. He, he was in a Christmas movie with him. That was his kid. And he wanted this action toy. And yeah. I yeah. Forget, I forget what, I forget what that guy's name is. But, uh, I, see, when you said first Star Wars, I thought you meant four. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> Literally, Star Wars number one, Phantom Menace. Yeah, yeah like, no. Yes, it's one, but it's not the first one. He, um, I saw him in that movie. That was terrible. I hated every moment of it, but my dad's like, you gotta watch it, you gotta watch it, you like Kindergarten Cop, you gotta watch it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Um. I have no desire to see that movie. Yeah. Oh, don't ever, please. It literally was so, like, oh, terrible. Um, you like it? Do you, do you like A Christmas Story? I hate that movie. Thank you. I hate it so much. Every I hate the story. Like, I tried... My mom worked on the play. Thank you so much. And I much. hate the I story. So the you. kid's annoying. I hate the story. Yeah. He's annoying. He's not likable. He repeats the same freaking thing over and over again. Literally half the script is him saying the freaking uh, rifle, whole big name pack of the package thing. Yeah. And I just need to... Know, I just need to <sighs> Be assured that you didn't like that movie. <laughs> no, yeah, I hate that movie. But okay, yeah. and what was the other one you saw? So the what other one I saw, I think, was called The Last Action Hero, and it's about this kid. That sounds about right. <laughs> it's it's about this kid that gets sucked into his favorite TV show at like this theater, or his favorite movie at this theater, and the action yeah. hero is Arnold Schwarzenegger, and this kid knows this movie in and out, so like you know. He's going around with the dude. He knows what's going to happen and stuff. But then, like, you know, stuff starts to change. And, you know, the kid obviously doesn't know what's going to change. Because, you know, because he's there, it's changing the narrative and everything. And like, literally multiverse theory. It's, like, <laughs> okay movie. It definitely, like, Kindergarten Cop, one of, like, m my favorite out of the three I've seen, obviously. Last Action Hero followed by, and then that Christmas one. I really can't remember the bottom name. of the list. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and people are like, when did Terminator and blah blah blah, and I'm like, I've never seen those movies, nor do I have a desire to, because my mom and dad like, explained to me the know. plot, and I'm just like, I'm not that into action movies, you know. But um, funny thing. That's like about literally Schwarzenegger. <laughs> funny thing about this movie. I was shown this movie when I probably should not have been shown this movie. I was a little older than the kids in the kindergarten when I saw this movie. Um, literally, this, literally the second word in the movie is shithead. Yes! Um, so... Sorry, sorry 
sorry, sorry if you don't want me cursing on your channel. It's no. literally in the movie. It's literally in the movie. It's fine. This isn't for kids. Like, this is not for kids. Like, even though it's got kids in it, it is not for kids. Um, especially yeah, since... Like, how, how many people got lured into it by the title? I don't I know, but um, there is a fun fact that um, uh, that the the principal of the school, the actual school where all the kids were at, she wanted to show them the movie, but then she watched the movie and then she that nixed character. that. Uh, she's not the actual principal; yeah. she's just an actor. But wonderful character, she's a great character. But yeah, the 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 actual principal wanted to show yeah. the kids, you know, their work, but she's like, "Oh no, this is way too violent." But one of the kids uh, saw it. Uh, with like their parents, they were like, "Yeah, no, I liked it. It was fun." Uh, and they were scared that it was like too violent and stuff. There is a lot of blood, so I can understand why they wouldn't want to show kids that. But it's I PG. Think the fuck was said at some point. No, I don't think so. I think. I swear I heard it or saw it. I had subtitles on. Oh, okay. Cause, um, they said Bitka. They said, uh, craphead. They said a hole. They said. Like, basically, all the yeah. basic ones. Except yeah, yeah, for, yeah. um, well, no, they said actual, the word penis. Um, but they didn't use the derogatory term for it. Um, Boys have penis, girls have a vagina. That line got me in trouble in the third grade. Oh, no. I said that at school and got in trouble in the third grade. Because, again, my parents should not have shown me this when I was that young. Wait, did you just say this was PG? PG-13. But oh. PG-13 for the 90s is oh. basically an R rating now. No, no. PG back then. Mm, like, true. Spaceballs? <laughs> I have not seen that. Uh, They say shit, like, every, like, five minutes. Mm-hmm. There's literally a line where, there's literally a bit where everyone's name is asshole. <laughs> That's funny. And he's like, I knew it, I'm surrounded by assholes. <laughs> that's great. I feel like that's what, uh, that's what Scar would have said instead of, I'm surrounded by idiots, you yeah. know? <laughs> he would have said that if it were an adult, like a more adult yeah. film, that would be funny. Um, They're both anyways. PG, aren't they? Or is Lion King G? I think Lion King, I think Lion King is G. Okay. What I don't believe is that Humpback and Notre Dame is G. And that oh, thing... Oh, get out. I the, am actually... The animated one? Yes. The okay. Disney one. That is rated so, G. Yeah. And that ain't anything I, close to the original. I am plenty... I don't know if I'm going to do that on this podcast or just do that with my friend because um, my friend Colette and her boyfriend... I was, uh, I was like, I gotta show her Hunchback in Notre Dame because I was talking with him uh, while she was doing something, and he's like, Oh, I gotta be there when you see, when you do that because that's one of my favorites. And so, <laughs> oh my gosh, that movie. Okay, but anyway, so back to yeah. this movie. <laughs> so what's really? Hey, we gotta pad the runtime somehow. We gotta pad Kidding. it somehow. Um, so there's a lot of fun little Ghostbusters things, like, in throughout. Oh, I saw that. I saw on the pillow. Yes. I saw that. It is the same director as Ghostbusters 1 and 2, so that's why. That would explain it. I've only seen one. Yeah, and uh, then, um, the little, like, laser thing that Dominic shows, um, Mr. Kimball in his secret hideout, yeah. that thing's loosely based off of a small, um, uh, a small proton pack. Um, right. So, yeah, there's those little nods in there to Ghostbusters. Um, it is filmed in Astoria, Oregon, which is it literally that school is located a few blocks away from the house from Goonies, which one of my all time favorite movies, The Goonies. If you have not seen that, we need to watch that next. <laughs> well, I guess that's what we're going with. Then. All right. OK, well, Goonies is next. Um, yeah, no, that is one of my all time favorite movies. A story organ just beautiful like when they do the landscape sh scenes in this like you know san francisco kind of looks like this all the time but it's not as good like it doesn't have pretty mountains it doesn't have like the pretty green it's just buildings so it's not pretty but this is oh it's gorgeous it's gorgeous i, I love it i love the the scenery I mean, and the landscape i've seen so many mountains irl that uh, just I can't 
appreciate the on-screen versions. Mm. I'm not gonna say where, but I, I because you're recording. But, mm. uh, I'll tell you after. I mean, uh, I've been see, I've been road tripping a lot because my family's from the Midwest and we road trip everywhere. And you know, I have fifty bazillion siblings, so we can't exactly afford a plane ticket. <laughs> so I mean, that's what we do too. We've yeah. road tripped everywhere, and like Utah mountains, they're all like gross and deserty, and they're not lush. <laughs> like this, like these mountains in here were like lush green trees, and mm. like you could get that in Tennessee, close to where I live, but like you know we rarely go through Tennessee. But yeah. I don't know, just because like it was oh, foggy and rainy we... all the time, it's always like you know the the the. The like wet green look, it makes the green more vibrant. So it's yeah. just pretty. I don't know. Yeah. Off off camera, I'll tell you uh, where. Oh no, you're good. You're good. I've seen some good mountains. So okay, um, so Mr. Crisp and his mom, uh, trying to go after his ex-wife and their kid to yeah. basically kidnap the kid. Which really messed up, by the way. Yeah. Um, and the fact that he just thinks he can do that. Um, but again, for plot purposes, like, the legal system crap was all out of whack and everything. Um, I will ask, who is your favorite character? Because I know who mine uh... is. I have three favorite characters. Okay. The, two two are, like, lesser characters, but one is, like, one of the main ones. Mm. I can't... I, I would say it's honestly a toss-up between the two cops. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I really liked whatever her name was. Uh, I think her name was, like, Paige or something. I, I know her last name was O'Hara, so I just referred to her... Phoebe? Role. Phoebe. Phoebe. Yes. Phoebe. Yeah. Phoebe O'Hara. She is so good. The whole opening with her, like, my, I think my favorite, um, one of my favorite of her scenes is, um, you know, she's sick in the car as they're trying to go to Astoria, yeah. and was it was so rough. Oh, the poor lady. Um, but, you know, they go to the gas station, she runs and, give her the key, give her the key! Yeah. <laughs> and then throws the hubcap out, and I just think it's so funny how comically big things attached to keys have to be but like you know places actually do that i remember when i was little i was like why is the key attached to a wheel and my mom's like so no one can lose it and i'm like why do you need something that big uh yeah what happened to a good old keychain yeah or like you know i don't oh, know I that is the type of keychain something a little smaller at least i mean i know that those are like not heavy but still, that's obnoxiously big. <laughs> but like that that just made it really funny. Um but Oh yeah. Yeah, she's she's my favorite main character. Really? Yes, because um I don't know, just the funny six scenes and then like um the <laughs> my she says my favorite line um right after um like when she's like, I'll, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna get up. She's like, Oh my gosh! And then um, when uh, she looks at him and she's like, Don't take the gun. <laughs> and uh, he's he's like, he's, Oh yeah, that's probably good. On second thought, you should take the gun. <laughs> yeah. That was the uh, best line. I yeah. oh my gosh, it's one of my favorites. I gotta say, uh, Kimball's character. Yes, is probably my favorite. Mm. because of the amount of growth that he goes through yes oh my gosh this yeah. is one of the best like i think this is one of the best like main character so, uh, growth so when you said story, like so. that that was the, your favorite main character i was like what <laughs> yeah well see because i didn't want to like just do the main character because every you know everyone loves the main character well, and arnold no, schwarzenegger is so lovable well, yeah, you have a really good reason to. And, yeah, he not... he's a great character, great yeah. teacher. He, I actually noted um, some very important good things he did since um, I'm in early childhood education. 
some of the stuff that he does with the police academy things are pretty <laughs> much actually what we're asked to do. Like, um, he he double checks with the kids. He's like, how many toys are we getting? And then they're like, one. And like, you know, that's called, um, that's called a uh, check for understanding. Like, you know, you got to make sure the kids yeah. understand the instructions that you're giving them and that, so they can follow them. And like, you know, he does that a few times. And then when they do it correctly, he praises them, which is like, you know, what you're supposed to do because like, how else are you going to get kids to listen to you and be disciplined? Like, if you give them compliments, like, oh, my gosh, you guys did that so amazingly. Or, like, um, when they're practicing for the fire drill, he's like, oh, we did. We need to do better. Like, let's do better next time. You know, right. like, he's doing all the things that we're told to do in teacher school, and he didn't even go through teacher school. So I think that's great. Um, and, like, you know, just proves to good writing and stuff. But... Um, yeah, yeah that, like, I, I just want to, like, note that. Like, that's what I love. And... Yeah. Just his his change from, like, this super tough guy with a shotgun... Yeah. To... <laughs> I'm the party pooper. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the best lines. Oh, my gosh. Oh, uh, there's some really yeah. great one-liners in here. Not only, a, not only a good teacher, but someone who cares. Like, yeah. Or Joyce. Well, and, like... And then, like, he also learns to, like, care for the kids, which is, like, a really big, important part to teaching yeah. is caring for the kids. When he freaking goes and punches that dad for abusing both his wife and his kids, uh, oh, that's the best. And then the principal be like, what was it like to punch that son of a bee? And he's like, it's great, yeah? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, if only. Oh. Why she, like mimics the punch yeah she's like yeah that felt good like i love that she's she's one of my fi like she's my other favorite yeah, character awesome. and my favorite kid character is the freaking little girl in the overalls who's so freaking cute every scene she's in she's adorable and i've always loved her she's always been my favorite <laughs> she's so adorable the E I E I O and she's dancing next to him. Oh, it's so adorable. That, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that kid is the best. Oh my gosh. Oh. What's really weird is like this is 30 years ago, so all these people are like literally 39, almost 40 now. All of these children. Because they're they're six. Like yeah. you're six years old when you go to kindergarten and it's 33 years later, so they're like 39, 40. That's so weird. <sighs> Movies are weird like that, man. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um. Oh yeah, that grandma is freaking crazy. Like the 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 uh, baddies mom. She's so yep. freaking crazy. Like yep. you. Like what's really interesting is, I I hate that it's like near the end of the movie that you get a little bit of backstory onto why Crisp is that way because his mom pumped him with a bunch of medicine and everything that he didn't need and so that kind of messed him up and probably is what got him addicted to drugs in the first place because uh, that was what the point of that was okay. yeah so like that showed his backstory like he resents his mom that? a bit and like that's why his family's been broken and like you know if you give children medicine and medication that they don't need they can become addicted to it like opioids and stuff like that yeah. Um, so that's probably what got him into the drug dealing business. Because I didn't know he was a, uh, a drug dealer before, like, um, before this watch. I thought he was just, like, some bad guy or something. But before um, this watch. This watch was when I, uh, like, because like, I haven't seen this movie in, like, quite a few years. So I don't, like, look at the, all the little details. But when I heard that, like, you know, when he, t uh, when Kimball takes Crisp into the, um, into the other room, room and talks with him, He's like, I've been chasing you for years from druggy to now murder. Like, um, mm. but surprisingly, this story has a lot to do with drugs. Yeah. You know, like the B story and the A story both have to do with drugs. Like, you know, the, the girl getting killed for ODing on drugs because, you know, she's a druggie. And then, you know, the main bad guy becoming a bad guy for drugs and everything. And then Wait, that the girl getting killed killed for ODing. Yeah, she's the the witness. The the witness. Yeah. What was her name? Cindy? Or something like that? I thought she got murdered by the mom. She did. She did, but they didn't know that. They just thought yeah. she OD'd. But yeah, that the, uh. So the mom probably 
uh, badly influenced Chris, and then Chris, you know, got down that road with drugs. So, like, like literally everything is kind of connected back to drugs and, like, mm, yeah, drugs are really bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. But, like, that, that, that grandma just scary. Like, freaking yeah. running it's over freaking Phoebe with the car. I was just like, oh my gosh, this lady. But it's so good when she freaking bats her. That's her with song without your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, Phoebe's the best lines. Let me just say. Yeah. She is some of the best lines. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, 100%. And then, like, uh, oh, oh my gosh. I found... So, so I was just looking up um, fun facts on mental floss and IMDb. And apparently... <laughs> The things the kids say about their dads and who is your daddy and what does he do? That's what the kids were talking mostly actually about their dads. Sorry, I, I zoned out for one second. What was that? So, so when when the kids are talking about their dads, they're actually talking oh. about their real life dads. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Bro, but the one kid with the death <laughs> thing... See, like, there's always a kid with something. There's, like, the kid whose father's a gynecologist, so, you know, he knows yeah. about privates. There's the kid who always talks about death, you know? The, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, the kid says the weird stuff about people's body because his dad is a gynecologist. And then the kid says the thing about death because his mom it. his mom wishes uh, his dad was dead. And that's yeah. a great thing to say around your child. But, uh. yeah. But, oh my gosh, this was movie... Was like, the single parent capital? Yeah, <laughs> I was, like, honestly, this sadly reminds me of where I grew up in Nebraska. Because, like, basically, I was, like, one of, like, five kids who still had parents that were married and not divorced. In my entire grade. And I was like, what? This is so weird. Because everyone, like, was talking about, like, having two Christmases and two birthdays and everything. And I'm like, What? You don't just have one. Yep. <laughs> they're like, I have one at my dad's house and one at my mom's house. And I'm like, your parents still live together? And they're like, yeah, no, they're divorced. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, my whole childhood. You're like, you're every telling, other kid. You're, you're telling me that so death do, till death do us part means nothing? Yeah. Apparently, to some people at least. That's so fucked up. Yeah, well, and like, it's, it's so... Pardon me. No, it's it's really messed up that, like, you know, all these kids know about divorce and everything. Like, you know, in the one scene where they're talking about divorce and then Kimball talks about his son and everything. Like, you know there's something deeper there. Um, which they tell later when he talks to Joyce about it. But, like, yeah. all Although these there was, kids there was, exposed to so much bad stuff. Yeah. There was one point where I was listening to him talk about his son and I'm just like, is this another lie? Mmm... <laughs> True. Because he didn't because he didn't know his son's name for a second. Yeah. Or he was thinking about like yeah. you know But he was like, what's his name? What's whose name? But he was just talking about his son. Yeah. I yeah, I it's mean like, it reminded me of Gru <laughs> from Stickle Me. Yeah. Who's who's Debbie? Your wife. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, oh, and then, like, um, oh, and that reminds me, so, he, uh, a big reason why Arnold Schwarzenegger took on this role is because, um, he had had a son, uh, the year prior, actually, before filming this, and because of that, all the classroom scenes are actually filmed in L.A., um, because he wanted to stay close to his family, obviously, because he has a one-year-old, so... Uh, so, so they flew the kids out, apparently, to L.A., um, but all the kids were from Astoria, so. But it's, but it's only the scenes inside the classroom that are in a sound studio. The, the rest of it's all in Astoria. Mm. So I thought that was really interesting. That is um, interesting, yeah. But, yeah, so, well, and then, oh, sorry, I'm, like, we're, like, jumping around the whole movie, but, like, I just yep. noticed um, something in my notes from early in the movie when the when the chief guy is like, oh, yeah, you guys are going to be partners, and he's like, I work alone. It's like, oh, that's such a stereotypical cop thing. Like, oh, no, I work alone. Like, literally. 
what police yeah. movie starts out and doesn't say, oh, no, I work alone? Like, every single one does. It's like, nah, I work alone. I don't work with no partner. It's just like, Psh. But I did thought, I did think they were very creative with the fact that they made um, a girl the partner rather than the guy and that the girl was not the love interest. I really love that yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I also find yeah. it super hilarious how he react, <laughs> how he reacts to her with the the fiance because he's like freaking out because he's like someone else is at the the thing. Is this Chris yep. or a bad guy? And he's like, "What are you doing?" She's like, "It's my fiance." <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "It's my fiance. Don't shoot." Because she knew he was gonna shoot. She knew he was just gonna go straight up and shoot. Um, Bro, this pro this guy probably has like one of the longest mo or one of the most like discharges on <laughs> discharges of police weapon, honestly. Mm. Oh man, but yeah, like yes, yeah, because like, most police most police officers carry around a sawed-off shotgun. <laughs> well, it's like it's another really funny thing in uh, one of my favorite TV shows, uh, Psych. The uh, detective Lasseter, he has a really long record of um, discharging his weapon, so they get a psychologist to talk with him. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, that's not a good thing. Because he's, uh, she's like, you've discharged your weapon 33 times within the past month, and he's like, thank you. And she's like, that wasn't a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's just say... These characters, these fictional characters, are very trigger happy. But I mean, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, so of course this character yeah, is trigger happy. But I like, did. There's that movie where he's like riding on top of something with like a rocket launcher and a minigun. Yeah. Yeah. Liter literally, I am heavy weapons guy. Yeah, literally. Except yeah. he's not Russian; he's German. But. True. Um. But, like, uh, another thing, like, with, um, with his shooting, uh, in, like, the drug den thing, he did not shoot lethally. He just was shooting stuff around people. Like, he wasn't yeah. purposely aiming for people. He was purposely aiming for other things. Like, he shot all the beer bottles and everything. And the couch. Yeah, but it's a shotgun. I know, which, but which he's very good at aiming. Spread. He's very good at aiming at stuff that wasn't people. So, because he didn't kill any, like, the only person he kills is Crisp in the entire thing. Hmm. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's respectable. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Especially for, like, a, a, a hero policeman, you know, in, in a movie showing only him killing the bad guy. And, yeah, that's like, oh, that's great. Um, so, there's that thing. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought it was really sweet when, um, when Phoebe was, like, uh, throwing up a whole bunch and he was holding the umbrella <laughs> for her while she was throwing up. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> and then he just carries her to the car. <laughs> <laughs> Complain, <laughs> complains about uh what 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 did he say? What did he call her? I don't know. Like a burden or something. I I don't know. He I can't remember, but yeah, he I was mean... like mumble. He was like mumbling about uh why did they send her with me? What when she was when he was carrying like her unconscious body? He actually was doing that in German. Really? Yeah. I swear I heard English. He was. Uh, I think he said a bit of English first, and then as he's carrying her into um, the, oh, yeah, the uh, motel, he said it in German. Um, and this yeah. is actually his, uh, I think, one of his only movies where he speaks in his native language. Oh. Um, that was also from the fun fact thing, but yeah. Um, oh my gosh. When he meets the children. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite, like, camera pans ever because like you just see how giant he is because you see from the kids perspective and then you oh, see the kids yeah. have to lean back <laughs> to look <laughs> all the way at the top of him because like this of... this guy's huge <laughs> they're six great like they're six-year-olds they're tiny that was also that also reminded me of despicable me mm. when they first meet rue 
the kids. Oh yeah, they yeah. They do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like I mean, well, like this guy is massive, so I bet that's like the exact same reaction they had when they first met him in general. You know? Yeah. Because like this guy's huge. Yeah. Um. Maybe they weren't acting. Maybe they just got. <laughs> yeah, maybe that was their original. Maybe I don't know. But yeah, um, <laughs> I, I love uh, when the, um, he starts, like, pressing them like they're, um, freaking, <laughs> like they're being interrogated. He's like, who was born in Astoria? And then all the kids raise their hand. Who was born yeah. outside of Astoria? All the kids raise their hand. <laughs> they don't know what yeah. that means. Oh, it's great. Um, all right. Uh, oh yeah, and then when everything's in chaos and everything, he calls the kids monsters. And, yep. And then a kid pulls a wagon into his leg. Yeah. That it's was like, really funny. I'm surprised he let that go on for that long. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. And then when he yells, it makes all the kids cry, and then he's like, no, don't cry, and then he runs out and screams in frustration. Yeah. But grabbing his ferret... Very smart move. Love the line yeah. where, what happened to your dog? Uh, what's a ferret? This, this is, a, is ferret. a ferret. Ooh. <laughs> like, best explanation for a child right there. And then when he says, okay, now we are having fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's great. And then, um, and then we get introduced to Dominic, who stays behind and tries to help Albert. He's like, you are not doing good, and basically everyone I know does better than you. And he's like, great, thanks. <laughs> um, and then I noticed this when he gets back the first day and, like, you know, collapses on the bed when Phoebe <laughs> wakes away. up. She was reading uh, the Guns of the Ammo magazine. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, and I thought that was a really funny detail, because I'm like, of course a police woman would be reading Guns and Ammo. Um, and then when she checks on, on him, they both just collapse on the bed. Like, he's like, go away. And she's like, it was that bad, huh? And then just falls on the bed, too, because, you know, she's yeah. exhausted. Um, yeah. And then um, <laughs> when they get back and the parents are, and the, and the moms are all talking about the guy, uh, like, uh, they're like, he must be gay for makeup. teaching kindergarten. And then she's like, yeah. Uh, she's like, I'm not wearing any makeup. Well, you're married. You're allowed to look like slobs. <laughs> None of us are wearing makeup. And then, oh, when the kid comes in, um, running and yelling, are you married, Mr. Kimball? And then he runs back out. He's not married, Mom. <laughs> oh, like the the, the writing for this is just so funny. The, like, the, <sighs> the, you're allowed to look like a slob. I was reminded of a line from a, I don't, I don't remember. It was a play my college did recently. It was, I think the line was something like, no man is attract, no married man is attractive. Except <laughs> to his wife. Mm. I was like, First off, that is just false in this day and age. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, have you seen actors? Have you seen the amount of people? Like, literally, there's a whole TV channel dedicated to ranking how hot men are, and most of these men are married. Yay! People give, people give men shit for objectifying women? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We're obviously worse. <laughs> Oh, uh, goodness me. All right. Um, so after the who's your daddy and what do you do? Oh, yeah, the fire alarm goes off. <sighs> the kids are in chaos, running everywhere. And he, he comes out carrying two kids, one by, like, his jeans and the other just... <laughs> like, it's so funny. He could just effortlessly carry these, carry these kids like that. Oh, it's yep. so funny. And, like, you know, obviously he's trying to see who the ex-wife is. because Oh, yeah, yeah. The whole reason they go to the story is because the, the, they're trying to find the ex-wife so that they can give her protection, police protection. And someone, can, can you please explain the $3 million thing to me? That never okay, makes sense. Okay, okay. So, um, the guy's grandma, or, like, sorry, the guy's mom 
said that she yeah. stole three million dollars from him just so uh, that they could have people go after her and find her because if sh- if they find her then the grandma finds her then Chris finds her and you don't want that to happen like like you know they obviously don't want that to happen but yeah. so the three million dollars she's like I don't have the three million dollars like you know she says um that's what blank yeah. someone I I assume it was the mom because you know the mom's obviously okay. on Crisp's side so yeah that yeah. makes more that makes a lot more sense so that was that but they were also like um we'll give you police protection if you give us the three million and then she's like I don't have the three million but you know they protect her anyways because you know they care for her because you know she's just trying to protect love. her son and he's in love as well but um <clears throat> yeah but I mean they could probably um and clearly he doesn't care who knows it. Yeah, uh, very clearly. I was like, they're... Well, I mean, I know that, like, um, married couples can work at the same school, but a lot of the times, if... They, there's, like, a lot of rules for if you're dating a co-worker. Um, but Which I'm sure, I have always found dumb. I'm sure the principal was just fine with it because she was there, too, cheering them on. So, you know, whatever, man. Um, you do you, you know? Like... But yeah, I mean, they're in two different grades, so I guess that's fine. Um, Because she's like first or second grade, and he's kindergarten, so. Um, Very small school. Yeah, very, very small. Well, like, (laughs) what I find really funny is, like, that even though it's a small school, um, Crisp, once he has uh, Dominic, he's like, how do you get out of this place? (laughs) <laughs> like, he's like this place is a maze and i'm like, like maybe, well, you, maybe maybe you shouldn't have you know in, inhibited your vision with smoke that's what i was saying i'm like maybe you shouldn't have put the place on fire so you can't see where you're going <laughs> that probably I mean, would have helped there are, there are there are a lot better reasons not to put light something on fire but still yeah um this like um also watching this movie it uh made me realize uh there was no way there this movie could take place nowadays um just because of you know school rules and like lockdowns and everything and you know again the justice system like yeah like there's there's no way but i don't uh they when i saw kindergarten cop 2 like i read the little brief synopsis and it's like someone stole a hard drive and it had important info on it and it's at this elementary school blah 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 but i was just like i don't no. know I don't know. no but i don't i don't think i will <laughs> yeah <laughs> well but it's like um cuz i when i watched previously i'd always wondered how did crisp get in the building and then when he says that he's a dad scouting a school okay that makes sense but then he leaves the building and he's allowed back in once you leave the building you should not be allowed back in unless you're escorted by someone you know because he was escorted by the principal around the school um so the fact that he was just let back in the school is really weird uh to me because it's like you already checked out the school why are you coming back why do you have explosive stuff on you um (laughs) police you know um but yeah, so then, uh, da 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 divorce, kids knowing too much about divorce, really sad. Um, Joyce asks him to have dinner at their home. Um, Leaned in for a kiss, but he was like, no. <laughs> He's like, I don't really know you that well. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if it was that or if he was just dense. I don't know. Probably both. I don't know. And again, um, he, he had a wife before. True, but they were divorced. So. Yeah. Um. Do, 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 do. Oh, yes. Uh, but uh, he seems like the kind of person who would be just like, I'm, I'm, I'm married to my job. Yeah, well, I think that's probably what caused the issue with the divorce in the first place. Yeah. Um, like, n- normally with these stories, it's always like, you know, divorce because they're married to their job rather than your thing i mean you got like hot fuzz and stuff it's literally like that um yeah but i was just like is the, that was literally like anime levels of density <laughs> yeah no no totally I'm like she clearly wants it yeah <laughs> um okay 
So, uh, oh yeah, he catches. Like, do you need a freaking written invitation yeah. before you kiss this woman? Because she clearly wants a kiss. Yeah. Honestly, well, she gets it. <laughs> she gets it oh, eventually. She, <laughs> she, she oh, gets she it. She gets it all right. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see. Okay. So hey. <laughs> back to um. Oh yeah. Uh, back at the school, Zach. Um, you know, since he's trying to find who the ex-wife is, he's trying to see, um, if Zach's mom is that, uh, and then he finds out that Zach's dad has been beating him and his mom, and he's like, okay, I will press charges if it hap if I find it again, and then, yep. you know, later that's the punching the guy in the scene because, you know, he's like, you beat up the kid, uh, what's it, you, 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 you punch the kid, I, you hit the kid, I hit you, that's what he says. <laughs> Like, why? I wonder why this place is the single parent capital. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, God, men are terrible, I swear. <laughs> yep. Well, at it's least. It's always the dude. Okay. It's always, the, du it's always the, the woman leaving the dude. It's never the other way around. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is some in some forms of media, but most of the time yeah or like if it's a single dad it's yeah. the it, it's wife the woman died leaves the dude because the dude effed up <laughs> yeah <laughs> or is effed up yeah either or either or um let's see do 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 um right chris is gonna walk through yeah and we pretty much already talked about most of the ending stuff oh yeah when <laughs> when um <laughs> Uh, when, um, after their, uh, Kimball and Joyce's first kiss, uh, he kisses her on the cheek in front of her students, and her students go, Ooh! <laughs> And I thought that was funny. Bye. I was like, oh, that's cute, and funny at the same I mean, time. Oh. I mean, then, then they, like, are one step away from making out in front of the whole class. At the end. Eh, eh, kinda, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Like, whoa, guys, <laughs> There's children presents, you know? Um, let's see. Oh, and what I found so cute was when he was loaded I mean, onto the ambulance they clear, for the kindergarten. They already, wait, they clearly already know the basics. Boys have a penis. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, that's too soon. Oh, oh, yeah. Come on, I had to. It's yeah, so you did. perfect. You did. You, you had to. Um... Hey, right, so, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, so, uh, confrontation, oh, sorry, um, so, uh, Dominic was kidnapped by Crisp in the, um, in the school, uh, Joyce finds them first, uh, he slaps Joyce, Dominic runs away, yeah. he grabs Dominic again, she threatens to shoot him, which is, like, the stupidest freaking thing ever, because your whole thing is you want your son, why would you try to shoot him? And, and Kimball tries telling him that, and he's like, drop your gun, or I will do it. And I'm just like, this is so confusing. Like, what person, well, obviously he's not in his right mind, but like, really? Really? He's your whole reason you're there, and you're threat, you know, whatever. But, um, the ferret bites him, he shoots Kimball in the leg while he's struggling, and then uh, Dominic runs away. Kimball shoots, um, I think twice and that kills crisp um uh so uh and then the grandma comes uh she had grabbed uh phoebe's uh gun uh after she ran her over um yeah. again really shoots effed up <laughs> Sh shoots shoots Kimble, shoots, yeah. shoots kimball in the shoulder i think um uh, I, I i think it was in the, I think it was in the back. I I I, I think it missed all, all, like his heart, but it it was definitely more serious than a shoulder shot. Well, it was like it was like one of those like in between the chest and the shoulder. Oh yikes! Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, so like probably like grazed a lung or something. Maybe I don't know. But um, since he was passed out, most likely due to blood loss or like internal bleeding, something like that. Probably. Yeah. Um. Yeah, O'Hara. Uh, beats the lady with a baseball bat. Um, uh, they're both in the hospital, alive and well. Why does she kiss him? Uh, I don't know. 
I didn't understand that, but that was probably one of their last scenes they shot, so maybe it was like a goodbye. Um, because her character isn't seen for the rest of the movie after that. So do that people normally do people normally kiss each other on the lips goodbye? Well, I don't think so. I don't know it. It was obviously like probably actor's choice or something like that. I don't know. Um. I, I didn't understand it either. I love how the fiancé comes in, like, ten seconds later. I know, but, like, he's so clumsy. It was, like... <laughs> and then he's, like, yeah. they're, like, you come into the wedding, and he's, like, is it safe? <laughs> yeah. Is it safe? <laughs> and they're, like, yeah, yeah, it's safe. He's, like, okay. <laughs> um, and then when she asks him the question, where do we send it to? And, you know, and then that's when you yeah. see him come back to the, and yep. he's being their teacher, you know? He he gives up the cop stuff and stays yep. to be their teacher and they run and hug him and it's a sweet kissy, little kissy. ending. The kissy kissy and the students cheering them on. I yeah. think both grades They're were cheering them on. They're gonna do it. <laughs> uh, and then I, that's I, it. I, I, assume that, I assume the we're gonna do it joke was for the adults out there. Oh my god. Then gosh. again, this, all, this whole movie's for adults. <laughs> yeah, so. pretty much, yeah. Um, again, probably shouldn't have been shown to me when I was that young, but you know, whatever. I enjoyed the movie. I still love the movie. Still a great movie. Um, I'd say definitely in, like, my top 30. Damn. <laughs> I don't... I, I watch movies so infrequently these days. See, that... I like too many movies. So that's why I said top 30 and not tw 20, because I'm like, mm, no, I know there are still some movies that I like more than this movie, but this is, like, one of, like, the ones that, like, I like showing people yeah. because, like, you know, even, from my childhood. I can't, I can't even think of 30 movies that I really, really loved. See, a lot of Disney movies are on my list. That's why I went 30 instead ah. of 20. <laughs> so I was like, I know I there's mean, more Disney movies I like, so... Your handle, you just changed your handle from, you know... Yeah, that's because I never did anything with Disney, and I was like, you know, I need a more general thing. Um, yeah. So I can, like, you know, do more content and not be like, oh, you know, but I haven't even done any Legend of Zelda content on my yeah. channel. Like, you know, that was my whole thing. <laughs> also, I suppose I should talk about uh, what I'm thinking about. Oh, here. yeah. I don't really want to talk about it on my channel yet. Mm. Uh, but I'm thinking about calling myself something related to Essential Primer, because... I am one of probably one of the few gamers on YouTube with Essential Tremor. So, mm. uh, and it's becoming. Before I was just like I was afraid I was gonna get like cyberbullied for it or something, but it's actually becoming a lot more common nowadays. Yeah, like well, um, like stutters have become common too, and um, yeah. it's just because more people are speaking out about you know what they have. Like you know the whole thing with like the ADHD and autism, like you know neurodiversity thing like you know i have adhd yeah. and maybe as possibly autism as well i don't know yet as but I. I have a bunch of family that have adhd i have uh my dad's side of the family has autism like you know there's yep. a good possibility i have a good mix of both but probably not too much on the autistic part because i'm way too yeah. social i have, <laughs> I have, like, I have mild autism and adhd as well but like uh, i have sensory issues so it's like yes yeah, so, yeah, right you. you know, but, like, you know, everyone talking about that now, it's becoming more prevalent, and so it's becoming yeah. more widely accepted, and, like, you know, people are willing to help accommodate for that kind of thing. Um, but here's the thing. I'm a gamer. Mm. The central tremor really affects Really affects you, yeah. 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 Well, especially because you especially play shooters. Especially someone who plays shooters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shooters with a mouse. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, every time I get, like, a play of the game and I watch it back, I'm just like, who is this shaky-ass hands? <laughs> oh, it's me. Mm. Oh, I have one more really fun fact. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what actors they wanted to be Mr. Kimball before they got Arnold Schwarzenegger. Or are you going to say, like, Mark Hamill or something like that? No. Okay. But almost as famous. Actually, probably maybe more. Wait, 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 wait. Harrison Ford? No. Um, okay. So, like, th comedy. Comedy. I don't right? know why I'm naming only Star Wars actors. 
Co comedy actors. Oh, I don't know. Especially from back then, I don't know. Really? Okay, so. All right, hit me. I'll, I'll probably I'll probably recognize the name. Bill Murray. Oh yes, of course. Patrick Swayze. Uh, name sounds familiar. Can't place the face though. And Danny freaking DeVito. The name did pop into my mind, but I'm just like, that's too out there. No, yeah, they only they didn't cast Danny DeVito because of his height. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> and they I got Arnold. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, the only reason was for his height? But, you know, I can't I can't take Danny DeVito serious, you know? Like, it, yeah. it, it's hard to take that man serious, you know? And, like, this role, I f it's good for Arnold Schwarzenegger because it's both the comedy as well as the seriousness, you know? And I don't feel like they might have been able to get that with Patrick Swayze because um, he was in... Oh my gosh. I can't remember, but he's in a bunch of other things. You're going to have to look him up. But, you know, Bill Murray, I know he can do serious and funny, but his, like, the heartwarmingness that you need for, like, working with kindergarten te kids, I don't think Bill Murray would have been able to have that. So that's why, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger is, like, you know, that's why this role works so well. Because, like, you know, he was a new dad. He loved working with the kids. Um, he had a blast making this film. Um, and, like, you know, he did really great in this role. And it's one of his favorite films. So, you know, I think that is a great general success all around. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, that has been episode one, Kindergarten Cop with Liam. Thank you for having me for the pilot. Thank you for coming, and thank you, like, I'm honestly so glad you hadn't seen this movie, because that would I've never even heard of it. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. Okay, yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm just like... Is it? Is it though? Is it really? I don't know, like, I'm just weirded out by people not seeing movies that I saw when I was, like, really young, mm. you know? But, you know, I had a lot of a different childhood than other people, because my dad is a weird movie buff who likes, like... Not obscure movies, but, like, not the main popular movies. And doesn't know the right age to show these type of movies. Yep. I watched, like, at seven years old, I watched episode three of Star Wars. See, now that's fine. <laughs> it's PG-13. There's yeah. a lot of disturbing stuff in three. Uh, oh, yeah. For kids. Yeah. I guess. I just was, like, kind of desensitized to violence, though, from that. But, like, see, violence, I'm fine. Gore, I'm not. Like, gory violence, I'm not okay with that. But violence, really? I just, yeah. Huh. Like, I can't handle The Walking Dead. But I can handle, oh, well. like, I don't know, people getting shot. I don't know. I'm really weird like that. Like, I... I yeah, I very weird stuff, but um, I have to go to work. <laughs> Otherwise, I would love to continue talking, but oh dang, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know how long we've been going, but oh wait, uh, well, 58 minutes, 43 seconds. I think that is pretty any, good, long episode. Any chance? Any chance you're free either tomorrow or the day after? I'm not free. Maybe in the evening. In the evening okay. tomorrow. Because yeah. I'd like to catch up, you know? Yeah, yeah. And we have Liam and Stitch podcast that we need to bring back. And actually, you yeah. know, do After, the, the you know, first episode. We need to do an episode two. Oh, we, we did, did we, do the first episode? episode? Okay. The first episode was posted, yes. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, we need an episode two. So, yeah, we'll do that. So, it'll happen. Yeah. Also... <laughs> You might have seen I've been posting more videos and doing fewer streams, so I think I'm I think I'm gonna be you know more up to editing something and getting it posted. Awesome, awesome. Okay, you heard yeah. it here I'm, first. I, I, I have a new I have a new editor <gasps> software and Ooh. it's made editing so much more easy. Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Okay. Awesome. 
Well, you heard it here first, folks. This is the uh, this has been the first episode of Watch with Gracie, and thank you so much, Liam, for coming on and watching thank this movie and trusting me enough to just be like, okay, I'll watch it. You know. <laughs> I mean, considering how infrequently I, I I watch movies, I mean, the fact that you were able to get someone like me. <laughs> <laughs> See, and like that's what like I. My friends, for some reason, have not seen, like, a lot of the movies that I've seen. So I'm like, that's why I need to make this. I need them to yep. see it so I could discuss it with them. <laughs> because it's like, it's it, like, oh my gosh, if I did this with books, I'd go crazy. But, um, <laughs> I need more people in the Lunar Chronicles. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, I need more people to talk about some of my favorite movies with, and this is my opportunity to do so. But, um... Yep. Yeah, thank you, uh, and thank you for listening, listener, yeah. uh, and we will be, uh, I will be back, I don't know if Liam will be back with me, at least, I, I might well, do you, one episode you said in we between. Were gonna, what was it? What was, Goonies, what was the... the Goonies. Yeah. That's gonna be next for so you. I'll be I back gotta, at some point. Yeah, it, probably episode three or four. Um, I know cool. my next episode I'm planning on doing with my friend Colette. Are you planning on doing this as like a weekly thing? Um, maybe, hopefully. Uh, I'd like okay. to make it a weekly thing. Like, I, I, um, as I said, I'm trying to upload more YouTube videos and stuff, and I literally have nothing to do all day Monday and Friday and Saturday and, like, Sunday afternoon, so. Literally I, same. My yeah. Mondays and Fridays are completely free this semester. <laughs> I literally just have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday classes, actually, and actually, I don't know no, what to do with all this time. <laughs> actually, no, that's technically not true. I do have something Monday evening, but aside of that, Monday and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I only have my free. job that like works to like works me like two hours maximum. So, mm. yeah. So I'm like, I don't know what to do with no, all this time. So no, no more no more seventeen hour work days at an airport. Uh no, I stopped that. I do a different thing at the airport that only takes like two hours maximum. Most of the time, it just takes me a little less than an hour. Yeah, yeah seventeen all hour right. work days are not where it's at. <laughs> Are you still recording? Yes. <laughs> I, need recording. A, I need it end. Okay. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> See y'all next video, I guess. Bye. <laughs>